seatbelt light. Please take your seat and fasten your seatbelts. Thank you. Hi there, Madcap Propeller Heads. Here's what's new in Flare 11. First, Flare lets you create a fancy new kind of HTML5 output called Top Navigation. This lets you move away from the more traditional tri-pane output and produce documentation that looks like a modern website. It features a menu and search bar on the top of pages. This is possible due to the introduction of a new top navigation skin type in Flare. Also, there are now smaller skin components that work with proxies to create menus, search, and toolbars anywhere in the output. For example, you might want to create a snazzy homepage with a big search bar right in the middle of the topic. And the new menu proxies are particularly snazzy because they let you create context-sensitive menus that change depending on the topic that's open. You even have the option in HTML5 of not using a full skin at all and just relying on the smaller skin components. Flare provides four different project templates with top navigation all set up. You can create a new project with one of these templates and a lot of the work will already be done for you. And it all works great with responsive output, so that the display changes nicely when it's viewed on smaller devices like tablets and mobile phones. If you want to learn more about converting your existing project to top navigation, go to the web version of Flare's online help, which, by the way, uses HTML5 top navigation output. The address is webhelp.madcapsoftware.com. Click on the Tutorials menu to learn all about it. Another big change in Flare 11 is the addition of the Builds window pane. Cool thing number one is that after you begin to generate a target, you can keep working in the same project while the target builds. And you can generate multiple targets at the same time. The progress of each target is shown in a separate row in the Builds window pane. Cool thing number two is that different colors let you know what's going on with a particular build. Light green means it's building, dark green means that it's finished without any fatal errors, yellow means the build was cancelled, and red means that there was a problem that kept the target from finishing. Cool thing number three is that the Builds window pane shows if there are warnings, ignored warnings, or errors. You can open the build log to see details about them. And cool thing number four is that there are lots of handy buttons in the local toolbar that let you do all kinds of things, such as viewing the output, rebuilding a specific target, or opening the output folder. Maybe the coolest button is Build Targets. This lets you find a project and tell Flare to start building or publishing any or all of the targets in it. And the best part is that it can be a different project than the one you currently have open. Absolute positioning is also new to Flare 11. This feature lets you click and drag different kinds of objects and elements, such as images, text boxes, QR codes, even paragraphs, to any position in a topic. You have the option to position things to the right of the main flow of the content, to the left of content, on top of content, behind content, or in the case of print-based output, you can position the element so that content flows around it on all sides. Pretty nifty. Here's another new thing. Maybe you've already heard the news, but Madcap Software has acquired Doc2Help. If you've used Doc2Help projects in the past, you can now import them into Flare. Just make sure that the Doc2Help source files are in HTML5 before you import them into Flare. We'll take the whatchamacallits from your Doc2Help project and turn them into the closest thingamabobs in Flare. Also new in Flare is the ability to embed YouTube and Vimeo videos. Just go get the URL for the video and insert it into this dialog. You can size the video and choose several other settings. PDF stitching is another new Flare feature. This lets you add PDFs to your TOC. When you generate output, the PDFs that you include are stitched into the output with the rest of your Flare content. This is a great way to create user guides in multiple languages. And here's a quick rundown of some of the other new features in Flare 11. You can integrate augmented reality scenarios that you produce in Mateo Creator. This lets your users interact with your content by scanning an image from your output. It's the latest thing. All the cool kids are doing it. Do you have a team of writers with each person adding spell check words to his or her own dictionary? Well, now you can create a global dictionary, put it up on your network, and have all of your writers point to it. This keeps everyone in sync. You can now insert PDF files as images. Also, many multimedia files are now supported in PDF output. So that's cool. Speaking of cool, check out our new macros and custom shortcuts. For example, do you create a lot of dropdowns in your project? Well, now you can record those steps and create a macro for it. Then, when you want to create a dropdown in the future, just play back that macro. Even better, you can connect that macro to your very own shortcut key combination, which is another new feature in Flare 11. Suppose you associate your drop-down macro with the F2 key. 
Anytime you highlight content to be part of a dropdown, all you have to do is press F2 and you're done. Told you it was cool. Oh, hey, you ever forget where you put a file, but you know what it's named? Well, now you can click in the quick launch bar in the upper right corner of Flare and start typing. Matching results of files and commands appear in a list below. Then just click your file to open it. Several enhancements have been made to search, especially in HTML5 output. This includes improved search results rankings, the ability to reorder search filters, pagination for search results, and more. As for source control, Flare now supports Git, which is the name of a source control provider. It doesn't mean, I'm going to go over yonder and get me some topic files, even though you can do exactly that if you have Git. Also, Flare's interface has been redesigned to adapt to whatever provider you use, whether it's Team Foundation Server, Subversion, Git, or one of the other tools. Here's something that every Flare author is bound to use. You can now pin things such as fonts, styles, and even projects to the interface. This lets you more quickly choose the fonts, projects, and styles that you use the most. For example, in the Start page, you can pin your main Flare projects to the top of the list so that you can always get to them quickly, while all your test projects are listed below them. Or maybe there are about 10 styles that you use more than any others. In most places where you select a style, you can pin these so that they're always at the top of the list. Those are just some of the new features in this release of Flare. There are many others we haven't even touched on here. For a more complete list of new features, see the What's New topic in the online help. Enjoy the new Flare 11.